Could you just give the audience just a little bit of an overview of what would be you know, the state of this, the remains here? Well, that really depends, Ron, on the state of uh, uh, the body going in and, of course, the embalming. Uh, embalming can preserve remains for a good long period of time. Uh, it can uh, provide the pathologist with a lot of information or completely uh, deny the pathologist uh, that information. Uh, but the bones are going to be keen to tell you everything. And of course, the anthropologist works for the pathologist. We're brought in when he or she needs us uh, to answer the questions that they're after. But decomposition wise, that's a really tough call. It depends on the, you know, what took place as far as the embalming is concerned. Um, I've been party to probably half a dozen exhumations where I've been surprised uh, and I've been um, not so surprised at some of the remains, some of the soft tissues that are there. So it's really it, it, it's really a rough call at this stage as to what uh, the pathologist will find. What type of um, bo bone damage or structural, uh, skeletal structural uh, damage would you might find here? That you'll find uh, what's probably synonymous with blunt force trauma. Uh, but to, you know, most of the skeleton, of course, depends on the speed of the vehicle and the location of the victim and things like that. But for the most part, you're going to have multiple fractures, uh, long bones, ribs, uh, you know, any type of the tor any region of the torso, uh, the head will be impacted, you know, arms, a lot of things can be present there. Uh, probably not sharp force trauma, but what's would be synonymous with blunt force trauma. And based upon the position of the damage on the body, we can gather other information, such as whether the vehicle was uh, decelerating, hitting the brakes, um, or accelerating, um, and uh, the front end of the car would lift up and hit the body higher. Right, right. Yeah, so directionality is a real important thing that, you know, that the pathologist can discern by looking at the bone fractures. Um, um, he or she can look at those things and get an idea. Uh, the anthropologist is interested in the physics or the mechanism of trauma, but the actual crime scene, of course, that belongs to the pathologist and the death investigators. Um, so we kind of fit in, you know, our piece to what they're asking. But yeah, you would expect some, uh, you know, a lot of different breaks based on, you know, speed, deceleration, you know, location of the body. And we have the Lacard's exchange principle, and usually, if a vehicle is um, going to impact a person, there's going to be an exchange of materials between the vehicle and the person. And there should be evidence of that vehicle impact left at the scene uh, as well. And I have I've heard nothing in this case about them finding any broken glass, uh, any paint on the vehicle uh, from the vehicle on the victim's clothing uh, or anything like that. Um, I mean, these were all would be all part of the investigation. Uh, hopefully, they still have that clothing. So that, that would be the coroner or medical examiner. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is based on the autopsy giving us the cause of death, and then the investigation by the police and by the coroner or medical examiner's team. They provide the circumstances surrounding the death. So, for instance, a gunshot wound is a cause of death. But is it a homicide, a suicide, an accident? That all depends on the circumstances the victim was found in. In this case, the cause of death is blunt force trauma. We can be pretty certain of that. But what were the circumstances? You can get blunt force trauma in a lot of different places. And even a car that's moving not all that quickly has mass. And that force against a, a human being is overwhelming. We have reports that the injuries to him were blunt force trauma to the head, possibly a disl dislocated shoulder, uh, an injury to the hand. If a car hits a person, you have to see something in the legs, the hips, and as you pointed out, if a car is, uh, if they put their brakes on and they begin to decelerate, the front end of the car dips down. Right. We can measure, well, you know, you've been, you've done this a number of yeah. times. You can measure the height of the bumper, uh, the height of the um, injury to the person, that wedge-shaped uh, bone fracture. And uh, you can learn a lot from that. But I can guarantee you that this young man was not hit in the head with a car. Once an autopsy is done, it's done. The evidence is the evidence. You take photographs as you work. 
and you find what you find. It's how you interpret it that is the issue. So the autopsy that it was done that was done initially, if we could look at those photos and see perhaps um, glass embedded in the skull in the in the scalp, if we could see gravel, um, you know, on his chest or hands or or legs, if we saw um, bilateral wound, you know, uh, fractures of the legs at bumper height. In the existing autopsy, we would interpret it as we saw fit, or as the experts saw fit. Um, so there is kind of a point there that you don't necessarily need to redo it, but it would be very, very interesting to see that original autopsy. I got into a motorcycle accident when I was much younger, and I was wearing shorts that night, okay? Mm. And I went across the front of of the hood of the vehicle um, that I was in the collision with. I left my skin from my thighs to my knee on the hood of that car as I, the friction across the, as I tumbled across the top of that car, okay? Um, so I, and, and I had bits of that car paint in my socks, okay? So uh, on my socks rather, and my sneakers, okay? so. Uh, you know, that, that another example of Lacard's exchange uh, principle. So um, thank God all I had was um, some minor friction burns on my skin and, you know, nothing more substantial. The state of the body is, is very much subject to whether or not it was embalmed. Um, and then, of course, there's the conditions of the soil. Uh, if he was put in a wooden uh, coffin, that's a very big difference from being in a sealed metal coffin with an over uh, a coffin case. Uh, you can get much more preservation that way. Um, temperature, uh, the state of his body as he was interred, all of those things make a difference as to the current state of the body. Also, when an autopsy is done, um, small samples are taken of every organ. So that's gonna be missing. Most of the time, the brain is also removed and is uh, preserved and not put back because it takes two weeks to fully preserve the brain. Now, when an autopsy is done privately um, as a second autopsy, the new medical examiner, the new pathologist, has the right to ask for the records, the photos, um, and all the tissue samples that were taken. Those are made into slides, so most places save them indefinitely. So when the word autopsy just means to see for oneself. So it doesn't necessarily mean recutting the body, that's probably not necessary, but it means looking again with fresh eyes at the evidence. Uh, perhaps they'll want to do x-rays that might not have been done during the first autopsy. A whole bunch of stuff to be done here, but it's more than looking at the body, it's looking at the totality of evidence as it was originally found. You know, that soft tissue can be anywhere. I mean, I, the ones I've been involved with, many times that soft tissue is completely uh, gone away and the pathologist says, there's nothing I can do. Again, by re-examining, uh, re-evaluating the slides and things like that that were taken the first time around, you know, that's an important component of it. But, uh, and then other times, um, you know, looking at those bones, looking at those fracture sites again, those things aren't gonna change. So whether there's radiographs, uh, initially the body can be re-radiographed and that information can be, you know, brought forth. Again, you know, that's the value of the anthropological component. Uh, if the pathologist so desires, you know, to have that included in, hopefully there'll be one there uh, many pathologists obviously know that kind of material, uh, but hopefully, again, that bone trauma is going to be preserved, whereas that soft tissue, it's really a flip of a coin as whether that's going to be uh, valuable or not. Analysis can also say whether or not um, a certain instrument was used to cause the blunt force trauma, especially in this case where they uh, now there's talk of a baseball bat um, being the cause of the blunt force trauma to the head and to, um, I believe, the shoulder, 
Right. The good thing about bone is that it keeps a memory of everything that impacts it. And sure, you know, a, a, a semi-lunar event uh, or instrument hitting a curved surface, things, bones fracture different ways. I mentioned before the physics uh, or the mechanism of trauma, and a lot of times that can be discerned. So um, putting an exact weapon like a baseball bat or a tire iron or a fireplace poker against the skull and seeing if it, if it fits, it might. Um, but you might not be able to isolate a certain weapon, but obviously blood, blood force trauma can be discerned pretty readily. Yeah.